So should the Falcons trade up to the number one pick? So we are hearing reports that the number one pick from the Chicago Bears is up for trade, that it's the, the Bears will listen to offers and different things like that. Now, here's the interesting thing. So the metric that you have to use is the NFL trade value chart, okay, where there's a point system that is allotted for not just first round picks, but picks all the way through the end of the draft, okay? So, for instance, the Bears' number one pick in 2023 has a value of 3,000 points, okay? The entire draft capital that the Falcons have, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, the entire draft capital that the Falcons have is 2,249 points. Point six points. So even if they traded away their entire draft, they don't even have enough draft capital to get up to number one. Now think about that. And, and I know it's a screwy system, but this is what NFL teams use. Literally, you're probably looking at giving this year's number one away, next year's number one away, and an additional pick, maybe third, fourth round pick. It's just too rich. I mean, I understand the idea of being able to pick the guy that you don't have to wait for anybody. You don't have to worry about where anybody else is picking or things like that. But when you're the Atlanta Falcons and the roster is the way that it is, okay, you're not going to free agent spend your way to building this roster. You're not just going to load up on all free agents and think that you have your problem solved. You have to have young, cheap labor or you find yourself in cap purgatory again. You have to find some of those young guys, and you have to have draft capital. Look, the Falcons are in a prime position at number eight, okay? Maybe C.J. Stroud falls, but if he doesn't, then you still have your probably pick of, you know, several defensive edge players. Whether it's Lucas Van Ness, whether it's Tyree Wilson, whether it's Miles Murphy, whether it's Keon White, you'll have your pick of all of those guys. Okay. I mean, there'll be plenty of edge guys. Or if you can't work out a deal with Caleb McGarry rather than franchising him or paying him, a, you know, above market value and all that, okay, you could potentially get a Peter Skaronsky or a Paris Johnson. So the Falcons are in good shape all the way around. Whether, whether your first quarterback choice goes off the board, whether your first edge player goes off the board, whether your first offensive line player goes off the board. Because again, you know, like we need to start drafting guys that are right there at the line of scrimmage where the point of the football is, you know, not, not guys who stand 10 yards on the outside of, you know, our wide receivers and unicorns and all that kind of stuff and, you know, cornerbacks and different kinds of players like that. You know, we sort of need to start building more inside. But anyway, um, we'll, we can talk about that another time. But when you look at your offensive line, when you look at your defensive line, and, you know, if the right quarterback falls, I mean, who knows? Maybe the Falcons are in the business for Will Levis or Anthony Richardson or something like that. But there's going to be a myriad of choices right where you need the most help, right where you need to focus on first. Not worried about the first corner, not worried about the first wide receiver, tight end, running back, all those different things. I'm worried about when the ball is placed on the ground, how close can we get a guy that plays there? And if that's Miles Murphy, if that's C.J. Stroud, if that's Paris Johnson, it's just, I don't think it's just worth going up to the number one spot when you have to probably give up first round this year, first round next year, and another draft pick. The, those, the draft capital for the Atlanta Falcons, while from the point value system that the NFL has, may not be worth as much. For the Falcons, it, it, it means a lot. It, it means a lot to have this kind of draft capital. So I, I don't, I, I'm not in, the, I'm not in the business, whether it's 
trading for Lamar Jackson or Justin Fields or different players like this or trading for the number one pick. I'm just not interested in, at the end of the day, giving up the assets and the capital that it takes to get in those spots. You know, if you're trading for Lamar Jackson, you're not just giving away a first. You're, you're giving away probably a couple of first, couple of seconds. Well, there, that's four players. Yes, I know Lamar and all that, but that's four players that if I draft right, you know, if you drafted the last couple of years, you know, if you could have had Micah Parsons and this, that, they transform your franchise. Even as much as Lamar Jackson transforms it, I get those young guys that are on rookie deals. They transform it even more because now I got four of those guys. So I just, I don't see the value from the Falcons for trading up and in giving away so much of their draft capital, whether it's for a Lamar Jackson, whether it's for the number one pick in the draft. They're in a prime position that if you just sit back and let the draft unfold, let the draft breathe, you'll find a key player at a position that you need a lot of help at, whether it's offensive line, whether it's defensive line, whether you decide to go with a quarterback in the first, you know, in the first round of the draft. Everything will just sort of fall into place without having to give up other assets and things like that just to take away the mystery of the, you know, unknown part of it where we can select anybody that we want and we don't have to worry about anybody picking in front of us. Just let the br dr uh, br uh, draft breathe and the Falcons are going to be in a prime position. And by the way, you can find a generational player at the number eight pick in the draft. You can find those guys. They're out there. I don't want the Falcons to start giving away too much of their draft capital when we talk about the idea of moving up, just, just to move up the spot. And by the way, you saw that the Colts general manager said yesterday at the Combine that they're not looking to move up. And, and they're talking about being in the young quarterback business, according to Jim Ursay. He's like, no, we don't, we're not going to, even going from four to one costs too much value in what we can do. It's not worth it for us to even move from four to one just because we want a different player. Let the draft breathe. Let it exhale itself. And you'll find a, dip, a, a, a really good player at number eight without having to give up additional draft capital for everything. All right, after you've made Hitting Hard with John Chuck for your first listen every day, make sure you make Locked on Sports today your second listen. Biggest stories of the day, uh, instant reactions, big game recaps, the take of the day. It's available Odyssey, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get all of your podcasts from.